I made some major headway with the streaming software. I've been using OBS for a while, but I've never been comfortable with it. And now I'm playing with it and actually uh, noticing that once it's properly configured, the uh, the clarity is that it's like unbelievable. Um, yeah, I'm using a uh, type of camera I'm using, a Logitech, uh, it's a 1080p webcam. Um, it's a 922 Pro stream. So it's designed to stream, right? Um, but I, I've been using it a while and I've done videos and streaming through this before with OBS and uh, I'm looking at what's showing on the screen right now and it's like ridiculously clear it's surprising actually um, anyways uh, we're gonna try and do a short video we're probably gonna create several videos today um, so <clears throat> I've been on this 1911 tear and uh, oh, for those of y'all who are <clears throat> have been paying attention uh, the weapon is clear uh, here. I'm always having to deal with this strong ass spring. So, I'm not sure if you can see that. I'm not pointing it at me. But it is clear. Um, no mag. This is my Rock Ultra 10 millimeter full size double stack 1911. Um, I have not been able to take it to the range. You know, I've been really busy with work. Um, but the plan is to maybe do it this weekend. This is my birthday weekend. My birthday is on Monday. Um, what have I been doing? I've been trying to figure out how to scrounge up more 10 millimeter and shoot it without breaking the bank. Um, so ammo is a little bit scarce. Um, and when you do find it, it's very expensive. Uh, and what is available usually becomes out of stock very quickly. So um, it's been a little bit difficult. Um, on top of that, I've been trying to order more magazines, and those are scarce as well. Um, in fact, I cannot find anyone that stocks these double stack Rock Island Armory. 10 millimeter these are actually fit 40 as well uh, magazines um, so I've done a little bit of research and you can use para I think it's p16-40 they're basically very similar to this you might have to do some cutting on the feed lips um, but there there are videos and forum posts that kind of document that process um, also, I've found that Remington R1 um, magazines for 45 uh, can be used uh, without issue. This is a 16 round magazine. The Remington R1 will be a 15 round magazine. So I ordered two of those Remington R1 magazines because um, Century Arms said that they were in stock. And of course, I don't believe they are because the order has been sitting there processing all week. Uh, the same thing happened with Arms Corps. So Arms Corps initially had them. The day I bought this is the day I bought. I tried to buy two extra mags, and I sat. There, you know, the order sat there for maybe two weeks before I kind of reached out to them and said, "Hey, what's the deal?" And they said they're out of stock. And I was like, "They weren't out of stock when I when I ordered them." Or so says the website. The website said they had like five to six hundred. Uh, left you know available um so either the website was wrong or they're playing this little game it seems like i'm, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of that actually uh people say they have it in stock and and they don't so uh i mean it's not a problem as long as you get it restocked otherwise i think it's like it's trying to pull the wool over folks eyes you know they order something and you sit there and you're waiting for months but you've you know you the the vendor or the the seller has already uh, charged their bank card or credit card, but yet the guys are sitting there months without 
anything to show for it, right? So I do have those on hold at uh, Century Arms because they're cheaper. I think Arms Corps was charging $44 a mag. That's kind of expensive. And I ordered, I think I ordered three of those before I, no, I ordered two of those before I canceled it. Um, I ordered two of these from uh, Century Arms because I believe they were at $32 a piece. Uh, $10, a little over $10 more. Um, so <clears throat> we're waiting on that. Um, I also <clears throat> I also did some studying up because I do believe in my last uh, video I was showing a target when shooting this gun where I was always pulling low left. Um, and I tend not to to uh, to alter the I guess the sight alignment, um, but I might do it with this gun. Uh, but I did do some studying up. I, I watched some uh, training videos, and I my problem might be one of two issues. So I'm not pointing at you. I'm pointing at a camera, right? So sometimes I think what I'm doing is my side alignment might not be right. Um, I might think it that it's straight, but it's actually kind of pointed that way. I'm looking down the sights and it's pointed, it looks like it's pointed straight, but it, I'm actually kind of, it's canted to the left, to the left. So, uh, I have to work on that. Um, I also have to work on, I think what's happening, uh, in combination with what I just described is that when I do my two, uh, two hand hold, I'm left, I'm right handed. So my left is naturally not. I'm not as, you know, my, my arm isn't as strong on that side. So, uh, when you're shooting, you want your, so I, I kind of shoot like this halfway isosceles and, you know, uh, so it's like, it's like this, but my hand, my left hand is kind of cocked. Uh, I should probably get away from that and start aiming like that. Um, also, I want to make sure that I'm controlling the gun with my left and not my right. Uh, what I think I might be doing is when I'm shooting, uh, I'm pulling more of my right since it's stronger. I'm trying to control the ground with my right. And because that's my, that's the hand that I'm using to kind of aim and control and, you know, the trigger, I'm pressing with this and it's pulling the gun that way. So, uh. Uh, there's some things I need to work on, but <clears throat> so I have three I have three Rock Island Armories on my table here. So that one was a 10 millimeter. With this gun, I have no issues being dead center. It's got the same sights. They might not be adjusted quite right. They look like they are, but they might not be. I don't know. Uh, but I have no problem being dead accurate with this. The difference between the two guns, I mean, they're both Rock Ultras. This is a 10 millimeter. This is a 9 millimeter. I'm at more accurate with this one, probably because uh, I don't know. I mean, the caliber. I don't know. I'll, this is a smaller cal caliber. This is a 10 mil uh this is a 22 TCM. And I'm not accurate with this one either. It's in fact it's sort of like it's worse than the 10 millimeter. I'm pulling more left and low with this gun than any of my other 1911s. And that's that's a very uh there's um, there's next to no recoil with this gun. There is some with this more so with the uh than the TCM but less so when compared to the, the 10 millimeter. But yet I'm accurate with this gun. Why is it? They're, they're pretty much the same platform. I know that the, the, they share, all of them share the same sights um, and two of them have the same sight radius. Um, but yet I'm accurate with this gun and I'm not with the others. So I, I'm not sure what's going on there. So my plan is to take this one to the range 
and adjust how I am gripping the gun when I'm shooting and account for the fact that I need to try and control the gun with this hand less so with this hand and keep proper side alignment and see see how it goes I might be dead on accurate with that you know following that but it's something I'm gonna have to continue to practice um, and I'll take the 22 CCM as well because I did do some sight adjustments with this to try and account for that um, maybe it might it might require me to make adjustments with these two especially since I'm okay with the 9 millimeter so uh, those are things that I kind of need to sort out um, another thing I noticed when I took uh, the TCM to the range and shot so this is quickly becoming my second or third most uh, fired handgun um, the most fired handgun I have is the GP, uh, the Grand Power P11. Um, I think I have like 13, what, 12, 1300 rounds out of that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Come on, turn off. There you go. Um, and then I have. my xd9 mod 2 which probably has 500 rounds through it this is a very close second within 10 rounds uh so it's 500 something uh with this gun uh all 22 tcm so this has a second barrel uh it has a nine millimeter barrel that i haven't touched yet uh a barrel and spring so all of those rounds are all 22 TCM. Um, right now, um, I did some checking. 22 TCM is more readily available at a decent price than 9mm is. And I know a lot of people are thinking, okay, well, isn't that a, uh, you know, what do you call it, a boutique round? 9mm uh, is certainly more popular but because everyone has guns in 9mm and everybody's looking for that ammo now because everyone has those guns 22 TCM it's still within stock it's still able to be found so I've been buying a few boxes here and there and right now I still have more 9mm uh, stock in 9 I still have more stocked up of 9mm than I do with 22 TCM but I can see buying a lot of 22 TCM at this, you know, with the pandemic going on. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking at this gun on the on the screen. It's it's a very pretty gun. I just love the way it looks. Um, it looks better than the the full size variants. There's something that I don't like about the full size. Uh, has to do with the rail. I think it's look at this this part here I'm not sure if it's showing well in the camera but it doesn't just it's not flush the dust cover actually kinda is beveled back a little bit or or, or angled back that cut right there that makes it look I think it makes it look a little bit unique um, what I would like to have is another 1911 with a with a short rail from here to here with the long dust cover so uh, um, another thing is <clears throat> when I'm shooting 10, 22 TCM so this gun is clear as well but we'll show you guys just so you know it's clear nothing in there um, what was I saying yes uh, magazines so when I say I have 22 TCM ammo there's there's two kinds of 22 TCM ammo there's 22 TCM there's 22 TCM and there's 22 TCM 9R hold on a second here that's 
it's gonna time out. Um, so I have both 9R and 22 TCM. Uh, they're both re readily available. So the difference is that 22 TCM is a tad bit longer. Um, so it will not fit in nine millimeter magazines. So this gun comes with a 38 super magazine, which will fit 22 TCM ammo. So I only have one of these and I'm not gonna buy any more because I found that I can shoot 22 TCM 9R out of this gun. Why? Because I have additional Wilson Combat 9mm magazines. Uh, so I've been buying a lot of 9R so that when I go to the range I can use more than one mag. If I just take 22 TCM to the range I can only I'll, I have to stop and reload this mag all the time and it's a I think it's a 10 yeah it's a 10 round mag uh, I might stop doing that or I might try and order a 38 super mag that I know will take uh, 22 TCM maybe something from Wilson combat again uh, but it has to be proven to not be problematic with uh, 22 TCM ammo and why do I, I want to do that it because uh, this particular magazine it sometimes if I load 10 rounds into it I'm all I'm always gonna have a, a malfunction so I have some footage from the range that I, you know I went to the range up maybe two or three weeks ago and the uh, the gun kept jamming up um, and, and I kept wondering I was like what's going on but I'm, I'm putting 10 rounds in it the whole time and then I started putting nine rounds in there and it had no issue so I'm not sure what's going on. It's maybe a spring issue. Um, so what I'll do is uh, I might I might order another round uh, magazine from from AdvancedTactical.com, uh, which is Armscore, by the way. Um, just to kind of re maybe replace this one, or again, I'll do some research and see if anyone else has been using non, you know, other like. Um, Wilson Combat or Chip McCormick mags with their 22 TCM and you know if I see that <clears throat> there are aftermarket alternatives for 22 TCM magazines I'll start using them um, but right now I think I have more 22 TCM than I do of 9R so in the end I just I just stick with this mag for now I mean it gives me a chance to kind of tap rack shoot why isn't this going in There's something blocking excuse me here for saying okay all right um and I I I do use like I said I do use uh, uh Wilson mags with this um and I also have a 45 uh, Metro Arms 45 in there in the gun safe right there, or the gun cabinet. Um, that also uses a couple of uh, Wilson Combat mags. Uh, two of them have, uh, two of those mags have flush plates. Others stick out a little bit. I'm not sure which I prefer, uh, but in the end, it really doesn't matter because these are just range guns, anyways, right? Uh, I use them as range guns at least. Um, so, so that's my, uh, that's my little spill on 1911s. Again, here is the, uh, that's clear as well. I think I didn't show that. Uh, so that's the nine millimeter rock ultra. And I'm, I don't believe it's, you know, when I bought it, it wasn't listed as a rock ultra. It's listed as an M1911A1 MS. Tactical 2. So here is the the TCM that comes with the 9 mil, nine millimeter barrel and spring. Uh, so it, you know again it comes with two springs, the 20, 22 springs and two uh, uh, two barrels. Uh, the barrel and the spring for 22 TCM, which is in the gun right now, and another set of nine millimeter barrel and spring that 
is in a Ziploc bag in my range bag. I've been meaning to try it in 9mm, but you know, I've already got a 9mm here. I mean, the difference between the two, they're going to be the same. They, they feel like they weigh the same. Uh, they're both MSs. Um, so they're, you know, I wouldn't even, you know, if I want to shoot 9mm out of a 1911, I already have one. And that's the main reason why I haven't swapped out the barrels yet. Uh, and here you go, my baby. Um, I've been thinking about removing this. Um, it, I guess it looks okay. It just looks kind of gaudy or, you know, it's sort of like, you know, if you're driving down the road, you know, if you're a sports car guy and you see a car with a huge ass wing drive by, like when I used to have my Subaru uh, WRX STI, you know, uh, that's what it reminds me of. Um, do I need it? Probably not since this mag is is beveled so if you look at it that would help get that in there just as well as that mag well beveling right so um i was gonna say something and i forget but yeah i'm on this 911 uh 1911 kick and i love it first my first uh this is my first 10 millimeter, by the way. I love it. Uh, I shoot it better than my Glock 22. Um, I handle the recoil better, and it's more than likely it's because of that, that very strong spring and two pound weight. <laughs> it's like two and a half pounds empty. So, I mean, I haven't fired hot ammo from it yet, but it does not. It feels totally different than when I shoot my uh, my 40 cal. My 40 cal is like, it's like, bam, bam. You know, and I'm not the weakest guy there. And, you know, I'm not the weakest shooter out there. But, you know, I'm not strong, but, you know, I'm not like super strong, but I'm not weak either. So, you know, a lot of it, I think, is because it's a Glock. Uh, Glocks are light. And because of that, uh, there is no extra weight to help mitigate that recoil. So, um, you know, the, the, the dy dynamics between different guns is astounding. Most people don't account, you know, they don't think about things like that. And I, I did. Um, I was looking at getting a Glock 20 as my first 10 millimeter. And I almost did. I was getting ready to kind of purchase one. And then I kind of thought back and I said, remember when you got that Glock 22? And I've fired 40 cows before, but I've fired them through all metal guns. Uh, it's a huge difference. So I didn't have any problem with the all metal guns, you know, and, and 40 cow. But when I went to, when I, I didn't even, I've never tried a, a polymer uh, 40 cow. And I thought that, yeah, I didn't even ask you know for any rentals or anything because I just assumed okay there's gonna be no difference and there was it was a huge difference uh, and I was kind of, I was a little bit up, put off you know I, I don't fire that Glock 22 all that much uh, because it just feels feels nasty um, you know some people don't mind it because that's what they're used to uh, but I got I got a lot of different guns here and uh, that's just not my preference it would be if I was kind of you know if I was limited to, to to just that one maybe but um yeah again I'm not having any problems with this whatsoever um, I am going to replace this or maybe touch it up I need to find something that'll last if you can see there there's a uh, <clears throat> there's some parkerization missing seems like it didn't take that well and I'm not gonna reparkerize it I'm not gonna sit there and, and sandblast some part or something I'm just gonna buy another part uh, unfortunately advanced tactical doesn't have any in stock um, Hooper gum works didn't have any in stock either uh, there's probably other places that do but I want a Rock Island Armory part um, Hooper gum works actually carries Rock Island Armory parts so uh 
Um, so I'm trying to stay within warranty. So if I have to ever send one of these out, I don't have to worry about uh, arms core hemming and hawing or staying outright that they're not going to fix the gun because I have aftermarket parts on it. So, yes, some uh, gun makers are like that. Um, but that's it. Um, I have nothing else to discuss other than the fact that uh, my next range session is is going to be with all three of these guns as I sort through, like we talked about, those issues. Um, and then after that, I do plan on trying to focus on my uh, shooting my AKs. Um, I have an AKP that I've very rarely fired. Um, I have uh, almost 500 rounds. I have almost 500 rounds through my uh, my AKV. Um, it's very easy to shoot that thing fast. Uh, and, and I'm not joking. Uh, it's very easy to be accurate from a distance and and go through a ton of ammo and right now what I'm trying not to do is go through a ton of ammo so I've been kind of that will be the last gun I shoot during the uh, pandemic uh, just because I'm trying to conserve ammo and it you know it's it's that fun to shoot um, I have a shitload of uh, 7.62 by 39 and I have three I have two rifles and a pistol that that'll fire that ammo um, and I have one of those, uh, the Sam 7 UF that I haven't fired at all. So that one needs to go to the range and maybe the AKP, um, and a side project project would be to get some work done on the AKP so that it'll fit the CNC warrior, uh, four piece, four piece, uh, break, uh, that I bought and we found that it wasn't fitting i think it's because of the the, the the thread adapter that's on there uh it's a little bit longer than probably standard um someone mentioned that i could i could file a bit off i think it requires more than a bit because uh if you saw my other video where there's no commentary there's no narration and it's just me showing the uh the brake booster it's down as far as it can go and it's still got quite a bit to go before it's it, it's you know it's able to reach the retention pin so uh that's going to require a significant amount of of filing off or so i might send it back to a psa and ask him to cut a bit off um unless i can find a gunsmith somewhere out here that'll do it or a machinist but it has to be done right you know, I don't want to fuck it up and then have PSA say, well, we're not going to cover fixing it. Uh, so I'm going to see if they'll fix it and see if they'll do it under warranty. Because you would think that, you know, I have a lot of people that are saying, well, I have that break and I don't have any issue with it fitting on my AKP. Uh, and that's I, I bought it under the assumption that, OK, well, it's. You know we're all they're all standard but apparently mine is not uh, so so we'll see and I'll let you guys know how that how that goes all right so we're at a little under half an hour that's actually pretty good for me uh, we're gonna call it quits and uh, take a look at the footage and then upload it to YouTube all right happy Friday guys